Measuring the Megaliths, a presentation by John Neal. John delivered a lecture on ancient units of measure from Egyptian cubits to megalithic yards and the surveying of earth in antiquity. He is the top living authority on ancient units of measure, also known as metrology. Recorded live at Megalithomania Conference 2006. Okay, well, um, as you've just heard, uh, the, the measurement system of ancient times is quite complex, but it's not complicated. It's all held together by a system of fractions, and it's all interconnected, and I'll endeavour to explain exactly how. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. That's complicated, that's not. <laughs> yeah, um, this is, shows the simple integration of measure. Uh, and these were identified by Livio Catulos Ducini, who's probably the uh, most famous um, metrologist. Uh, he wrote the, the uh, appendix to Peter Tomkin's Secret of the Great Pyramid, which is a wonderful book, and very informative. And he came up with these measures, which I've portrayed as so. Now, the Mycenaean there is related as 15 to 16 of the Roman and also as 9 to 10 of the Greek. And, of course, if you know anything about metrology, it's widely accepted that the Roman is 24 to 25 of the Greek. Well, I extended that slightly by the certain knowledge that the so-called Drusian or um, Belgic foot is eight to nine of the Roman. But then if you put them in this arrangement, the same as Tacchini did, then you can see that it's also five to six of the Mycenaean. Now, and these are the accepted values at, at this rate, you know, and, um, and, and they're all very exactly uh, defined. Tacchini uh, defined that from the grave circle of Mycenae, which is exactly 100 of those Mycenaean feet. Um, Already we're beginning to see a certain pattern there, in as much as that uh, we we're getting square numbers, three threes and nine, five fives are twenty-five, three threes are nine, four fours are sixteen, five fives are twenty-five, three threes are nine. So we're seeing square numbers here, and this fact has escaped me. Now you can extend these measures to all known values of the feet. Now I've used that the, those measures there were what's called what I've had to term, I've had to make up terminology that, that um, I've tried to make uh, fit their character, you know, or, or their nature. Um, but, but these are the same values, uh, or not the same values, rather. Um, my God. It's quite, <laughs> it's, it's, Okay, one back. There we are. <coughs> um, now, here, um, the, I've identified all the feet that um, have the same um, classification value, which I've termed root, and how they, this is how they are in terms of the English foot, which is how they're supposed to be read. Now, the Mycenaean then has become 0.9 feet. Now, the reason I've shown, um, chosen this form of, uh, of expression is I've taken all the feet that are related to uh, the English foot, the English foot there, which is also a value of the Greek feet. The Greek feet are, in fact, extensions of the English foot because the English foot is one in a series, or the, Greek, the English foot is one in a series of what turn into the Greek feet. And, and all the other feet have the same multiplications. I'll endeavour to explain this as we go along. Now, this is how they appear. As, like, um, common Greek, then, is uh, 35 to 36 of the Greek English. And these two values, the, the English foot and the common Greek foot, are pivotal to the whole structure of metrology. They relate to each other as 35 to 36. And 
each of them relates to one or the other of the measures, and this will become clearer later. But this is the same method, two methods expressing the same data. This is the same as that, but I've arranged it, as you can see, uh, was in the original table, uh, as suggested by Stacchini. And this is how they all fit together. Yeah. And you can see that the Greek and the English yeah, fit most of them. In fact, all of them are connected to those two. No one measure is connected to all of them by a move of a single fraction. Um, now, it's even more, more pronounced now, being expressed like this, that these square numbers are coming up, 64 there. Nine there, sixteen there, and uh, it was John Michel who picked this out. Actually, he, he used my values I've got, um, and he composed another table, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, first of all, a little uh, elaboration on this. <clears throat> um, there's only twelve feet shown there, and, and, and there. I thought uh, at the time were, were the, pretty much the range of feet. And it's difficult to see from there. But I've cut some slats to be those sizes. And here they all are, all those feet. And you can see there's not a great deal of difference between them. is the feet of all nations. I don't know if you can see that very well. But there's not a great deal of difference in the lengths of the feet. And, and these are used as far apart as uh, Mexico and Japan. And they all use the foot measure. Uh, but they vary for reasons which I'll endeavour to explain. <coughs> now taking these square numbers that appeared so prevalently in the table, John Michel arranged them as so. But he used all the squares. You see, um, oops. He used all the squares. Uh, 3, 4, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 181, so, and so forth. And um, he found that, that uh, there were Every foot related to, to a square number. Now, at the time we arranged those, there are in actual fact from here, which is the Russian foot. You find it all over the place. I've just called it Russian. I've, I've called these by these terminologies um, because they relate to the English or the common Greek foot by a single fraction. But um, this one, for instance, uh, the one called Assyrian, is also Mycenaean, and they call it Italic and Etruscan, Etruscan, and there's hundreds of names for these feet, which has made the subject seem terribly complicated. Well, in actual fact, it's very straightforward. Now, certain numbers we hadn't identified. There's one, but it is six to seven of the Iberian foot. And the Iberian foot is one third of the Spanish fara, and the Spanish fara but it's still used in lots of South American countries, and it's still used in Spain by artisans. Uh, they've adopted the meter as, as the uh, um, uh, legitimate value now. Uh, there's the Iberian foot, yeah. And three of those is 2.724587, which is the exact value of the Spanish flora. And it's generated mechanically. You see how these numbers were generated mechanically, and they're only visible in terms of the English foot. If you express this in millimetres, it would be completely invisible. You wouldn't see a damn thing. But because the English foot is an ancient measure itself and related to all the other ancient measurements in this manner, then ancient metrology is easily interpretable by using the English foot. If you use metres, you'd be absolutely lost. You, you, you wouldn't have a clue what was going on. Now... We've recently found this one, 1.066 feet. Um, a reference to it, a, a very solid reference. It's a reference by Flinders Petrie, who was probably the most engaged archaeologist you could possibly come across. 
and a tireless worker and very reliable with, with his information. And he found the cubit of that particular foot. One and a half times that is 19.2 inches. And he found that precise value being used in the temples of Persepolis. And I've since found references to the same length being used um, in Githium in Greece. There's a, a metrological block there that has, it's a capacity block, it has um, capacity that's cut into it. And um, uh, reading the same article on, on the Githium block, it said that the, the, the cubit commonly used in Githium was 19.2 inches. Well, this is the foot of that cubit. Because the cubit is one and a half feet. Sometimes it's two feet. Now, you can see uh, that's the smallest of what you might call the Pes Mathematica. And this is the longest Pes Mathematica. That is, the, the, these are all generated mathematically, and they're all values that we, they would use as standards of a foot. Now, that there are lesser feet here. But they are also half cubits. That's half the um, <coughs> a one and a half feet cubit. So they're three quarters of a foot. That is twelve digits. Yeah. So that's uh, here, here, and here, and here. They're all half cubits. And they also use two feet cubits. It's a very common measurement: two feet. And the smallest one is 1.8 feet. Therefore, when you're dealing with metrology, anything less than 1.8 feet is a one and a half feet cubit. Anything more than 1.8, you'd have to divide by two to see what was its foot. Yeah. So, so it's, it's very handy to, to familiarise with these tables. Oh, yes, there's one more point I wanted to make there. The one that we've been talking about, the standard of Githium and Persepolis, is also still in common use. And it's on um, tape measures that are used by uh, American, American carpenters. Every 19.2 inches there's a diamond marked. And they're to find out where stud marks are. Because five of those non-load-bearing non, um, non walls that, that involve stud work, that, that they would be slightly wider spaced. So uh, every 19.2 inches, the same cubit is being used. But we don't have terminologies like cubits anymore but we still use the, the identical lengths. Now, five of those, because that's the cubit of that, is 1.6 feet. Five of those is, is therefore eight feet. So the, the, they still have a very practical reason that these ancient units of measurement have, you know, that there's very good reasons for them. Now then, we'll move on a bit. If I'm going to press it in the right direction, that is. Uh, now then, this tells us something about the integration of measure that we've already noted. Um, this is probably the most famous drawing of canonical man that's ever been produced. And, and it's, it's an absolute work of art. It, it's, it's, a, it's genius. Well, Da Vinci was, wasn't he? We know that. But he's drawn in a six-foot square. Well, I, I've, if he's drawn in a six-foot square, if canonical man is six feet tall, and there's no indication uh, in Da Vinci's work that he's six English feet, but, but um, he's divided up into cubits. Uh, there is a cubit, one cubit, two cubits. That's therefore three feet. There's the other cubit, and there's the final cubit. Well, there's a standard measure of, of uh, a method of drawing a circle of the, as the, of the same perimeter as a square. Squaring the circle, it's an age-old age old problem, age problem. But here, if you draw a Pythagorean triangle there, of three, four, five, you draw the corresponding square, the triangle the other side, then the centre of that circle to the centre of that, would enable you to draw a circle with the same perimeter. And, and the ratio it gives you is 22 over 7. But the three, four, five triangle makes it 14, so it's a double unit there. So it's 14 by 44, you know, 14 in diameter and um, 44 in perimeter from those numbers. And those numbers then would be half a foot because that's one and a half feet. That's a three feet. That would be three feet there. 
uh, or three in number there. That'll be four in number. That's five in number. It's the basic Pythagorean triangle and is the building block of the universe, according to Pythagoras. Um, so I've used that to illustrate another circle that you can draw. This is Da Vinci's circle here. And it's 24 Roman feet if your man is six feet tall and he's six feet in one of the other feet, you know. Um, then the circle that you draw from the age-old method that I've put here would be 25, 24 English feet. So 24 Roman feet is the circle that Da Vinci drew. And if you draw the other circle there, it's 24 English, and, and that shows uh, you know, a very distinct geometrical relationship between canonical man and um, time-wanted methods of, of drawing squared circles. Now, you have well-known measures here. Uh, that's 1.6363. It's therefore a cubit, a one and a half feet cubit. And it would be a foot of 1.090909. And this is a Sumerian foot, which is 24 to 25 of the Royal Egyptian. This then is a two feet cubit here. More of that when we get to Stonehenge. But um, this then is your basic megalithic yard, or one of the megalithic yards. It's 2.7272 feet. And this is a step, but we'll come to this a bit later on. And his foot, because the Royal Egyptian relates as eight to seven of the English, then his foot is exactly a half of the Royal Egyptian cubit. Two feet would be 1.7148571. And you find this value of the Royal Egyptian cubit repeatedly used. So canonical man, his foot is one-seventh of his overall height. Now, all ancient measurements are subject to the same variations. Um, now, the variations go along the rows as 175 to 176, 175 to 176, 175 to 176. And I've had to call, give them some sort of terminology. Uh, and between the two rows, it's 440 to 441, 440 to 441. 440 to 441 and so on. Now, this simple from a root of number one multiplied by these values, this would be 175 over 176 squared, or 176 over 175 squared. And this is a precise value, the one that Stacchini was using in the, in the original um, uh, small table that he drew. Um, that's exactly the most widely accepted value of the Greek foot. Now, this is a geographic, a root geographic value, and this would be one three hundred and sixty thousandth part of the, of the degree on the Earth, yeah, at 38 degrees latitude, which is around three-sevenths of the distance from the equator to the pole. Um, if you take... Oh, dear, hang on. I've gone back the wrong way again. Now, if you take... Uh, it's gone a bit dippy. Now then, if we take this, then the standard canonical, I've called this canonical because from a multiplication from a root, 441440 four, 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 plus 175 to 176, there to there, is 1008, and that's a canonical number. And all of the foot foot values that you care to put in that position. Any one of those foot values in that original table, all 19 of them that come from the bent table, the mathematical feet, any one of them that you put there are all subject to these multiplications. But this it, it is how, from a root of an English foot, they progress into values of the Greek foot. This then is 175, 176, 176 of 175 squared and is the precise accepted value of a Greek foot. So it's a root geographic Greek foot. Now, this particular one that is of interest to us is um, the exact value of the foot at our latitudes, 360 thousandths of the degree at our latitude, or the latitude of Stonehenge, Stonehenge is the 52nd parallel. And this is what 
our Royal Navy at this value. Um, reckoned uh, was 360,000 to the degree exactly that value because our degree is 69.12 miles at this latitude. And um, one sixtieth of that is the basis of the nautical mile and it's 608.256. Uh, it's rounded for convenience to 6080 which is the nautical mile accepted in Britain, but its real value is 60802.56, and one sixtieth of that then to be one second of a degree, so 100 times that then, is the exact length of the stylobate of the Parthenon, and it also is, governs the measurements that we find in Stonehenge, not sure exactly how when we get there. Well, then. These are all the possible feet and, and, and subject to their multiplication. So uh, it's not very clear, actually, but, but any one of these is a foot. And, and, and not all of them have been noted at these precise values, but enough of them to, to, to um, give by inference the existence of the others. But, but these are all the possible foot values. That's all the root feet and all the multiplications they're subject to. And it, like I say, it's complex, but it's not complicated. It's all very, very straightforward. But nobody's ever understood it before. I don't know why. <laughs> now, I'll just run through a little bit about how, um, <coughs> how, how scattered and seemingly complicated the, the, the evidence is. I, I found this uh, in a book by Ordo et Mensura, which is a um, a, a firm of uh, a, a, a German sort of association who are all interested in ancient metrology. And um, this gives all the foot values of, of the cities of Germany at the time of metrication. Now, that's not the way I'd present the evidence. You know. I, I, I had to go through, and this is my methods, I had to go through, and um, damn it, I keep doing that, I had to go through and pick out all of these millimetre measurements convert them to feet to make some sense of them and then give them their classifications. But when they're properly tabulated, in, in, you know, uh, so that you can see what's going on, they appear, this is how they'd appear. So I've taken all of the feet of the same value that I found used over Germany. Then I've put the cities where that feet was used, where that particular value of the foot was used. And these particular values of the foot that they're, they're only for administrative purposes. Uh, it's for, for taxing, tithing, regulation. They're, it's a, they're bureaucratic measures. Um, and, and they don't mean a thing. I mean, say something's Egyptian or Assyrian or Sumerian. It's, it's just the bureaucratic standard. All of these values were used by all cultures. And here you can see that this is the case. Here in Germany, we have... Um, there, we have a, the Belgic foot. And at that particular value, it's a root geographic value. And that's the precise value of the foot that we saw in the original table that elaborated slightly on Stacchini's simple one. And then um, we can see all these ancient measures. This is so-called common Greek. Um, and this is the Olympic Greek. And this is the one that's used uh, um, in, in the original tables. You know, it comes into one of these millimetre values. Now, these are the absolute values of these feet taken from the mathematical construction of metrology. And this is how they've been expressed as millimetres by the bureaucracy of Germany when they went metric. Now, they've rounded everything up, and you can see, you can see how narrowly they can form. You know, they've just gone to the nearest millimetre. And this is so obviously the case. This is as they ditched ancient metrology. But when, when the meter was introduced, and this draws a hideous veil across the subject, uh, expressing things in meters, you can't see what they are. But I've had to convert these all to back into feet to see where they fit. Um, there's an interesting little measure, actually. I should have dealt with that earlier. It's and I've called it. Um, it was a foot I dismissed and, and as unidentified. Um, in fact, I hadn't really run across it. But it, it emerged from John Michel's construction 
of, of uh, the square numbers connected with the, the development of the measures. And then I found that Herodotus had claimed that the, the base of the Great Pyramid, which is 756 English feet, was um, 800 feet. So I've called it the same year foot because Herodotus was, was from Samos. And then, as is so often the case, when you find one of these measures, you find it all over the place. And um, there it is in use in Germany. Uh, here, where is it? Here. So it's, it's in use in all these cities of Germany Bremen, Enger, Osterwalen, Westfalen, Gotha, Korn, Kum, and so on and so forth. And when you find it except something as a measure, it seems as if uh, you, you, you then find plenty of evidence for it. I'll go on from there a bit. Um, I, I did these tables in, in millimetres and things because I gave a talk to these Germans, uh, uh, Auto at uh in October last year, and because I was trying to express things in English feed, went right by them. They, they never got a thing. And they're supposed to be experts mentioned metrology. They know nothing. They know absolutely nothing. Now, this is how... <coughs> it's complete folly to look for a single standardised measurement in, in any building at all, any, any ancient building, be it a Greek temple, be it, be it, um, be it a megalithic ring, you won't find that they're designed around a single unit of measure. Now, this is how all these different feet exactly fit Stonehenge. And this is just the feet. Um, there is the, the lintel ring of Stonehenge. Very significant because it's one thirtieth of, of the, the overall width and there are 30 lintel stones all round. It's a metrological dream. It's a metrologist's paradise. The and, and, and this, of course, is how the standards would be kept in the monuments and the temples. And this is what people have always asked. How could nomadic um, people possibly uh, maintain their standards? This is how, in the fabric of their monuments. And, and, and if they met up there, the scientists, every four years, every eight years, whatever, from all over, then they could calibrate all their instruments from the stones that are standing there already, the length of the temple wall. This is how the measurements have been preserved from prehistory to the present at the identical values. Now, the inner diameter, then, is, is 14, then, to 15, of the, of the outer diameter of the lintel ring. And this is very significant, 14 to 15. Is 1.07142, and, and that as a measurement is um, uh, the root of the Belgic feet. And the Belgic feet is writ large here, writ large in Stonehenge, because all the measures in Stonehenge, here you can see, because the Greek foot here, 96 Greek feet of 1.01376 feet, and it's exact. Um, Petrie measured uh, Stonehenge very, very accurately, and then he got it spot on. Uh, and that was the inner diameter he called the Palazgo foot, the Palazgo Roman foot he identified it as. And I've later seen the same reference to the identical value, um, which is 0.9732096. It's there. That, that, that's the inner diameter of, of, of the Stonehenge little circle. And uh, the outer diameter is then 100 common Greek feet of 104272. And the ratio that links them, of course, is 14 to 15. But in terms of our root English foot being multiplied by 101,376, all of these values are multiplied by 101,376 from the root tables of the ones that relate to the English foot by a single fraction, you see. So this would be the measure that governs Stonehenge, 101,376, which means it's built to standard geographic. Now, this value here is the geographic Greek foot on the very, the very latitude upon which Stonehenge stands. And I find this highly significant. The, I, I'm running out of time here, actually, so I'll have to skip on. Um, oh, dear. And then here is Stonehenge. This is one of John Shell's diagrams. Um, it's a pity he's not here to receive his dues for, for, for all this. Uh, he, he will be here. But 17.28 um, miles... It's exactly, exactly a quarter of a degree. And it's the quarter of a degree that separates the, 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 the latitudes of Stonehenge and Avebury. I don't mean closely. I mean exactly. This is what comes out of a study 
of, of, of uh, all the Bronze Age from Neolithic is the nitpicking accuracy of these people in, in, in the dispensation of their monuments and in the precision of, of their layouts. Um, th this is just a, a, an aside here because the style of here is 101376 feet long, which is one second of one degree. And this is meditate those straight how it's foolish to, 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 to look for a single unit of measurement around any construction because the whole thing was about the preservation of the integers. So you've got whole numbers in every aspect. They didn't have fractured numbers. And this is the, 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 basically the, um, the, the purpose of ancient metrology and its complexity is the Pythagorean principle of, of perfect archetypes that exist beyond the material. And everything that becomes material strives after the perfection of the archetype, but of course never quite makes it. Everything's a little bit flawed. So um, that, that they had a whole gamut of numbers to express everything, and, and they're mathematically generated to express everything in integers. I mean, every man is six feet tall in one or the other of the feet. You know, that, that, that's the sort of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the, that range then would be from about five feet three to seven feet. How neat, you know. But um, here you see uh, Vitruvius, uh, the Roman architect, gave us methods of deducing modules from the temple constructions and 24 and a half into the stylobate or the peristyle there which is the top step which is the same as the architrave um, is exactly 100 101 divided by 24.5 it's four common greek feet at the again the standard geographic value, the same values that were used in Stonehenge are here, as large as life in, in, in the Parthenon. But all these other uh, methods of finding um, the module. Uh, here we've got um, the, 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 the metopes and the triglyphs. This is how the frieze is divided up classically in a Greek temple. And together the, the, they make up um, a cubit. It's exactly that length. This is 1.1264, you find this number all over the place. Um, for instance, on the Ashmolean man, he's exactly six feet of 1.1264 in his width. You know, it's a very famous statue of a man outstretched with a Roman foot over his arm. Seven, six to seven ratio again, you know. And, and it's exactly that value. And, and, and that value of that foot is also found on a metrological stone in Leptis Magna, a very famous stone. Anyway, um, Better go on. Um, this then is the nature of the megalithic yard. This is what a megalithic yard is. It's a step, and this is what its detractors have always said it was. It approximates to a pace of the, the, the Neolithic male. Of course, it does. The whole thing's designed around the human body for human convenience. A step is the human body in motion, and this is how um, itinerary distances were measured in, in something we can all understand. Uh, a step is two and a half feet, a pace is five feet, a, a mile is 5,000 feet. Mil passim, which is where we get our word mile from, it's, it's uh, simply 5,000 paces, 5,000 5, times five feet, or 1,000 times five feet, rather. Now, th this is, if you want to say the megalithic yard is two and a half feet, which of course it is, uh, and, and Tom never saw that. But he did know that the megalithic yard, something that George was speaking about uh, in his uh, cup and ring markings and all that sort of thing on the stones, Tom deduced a measurement that was one fortieth part of a megalithic yard. Well, 40 digits, because it's 16 digits to the foot, is two and a half feet. Yeah. So, so, so that, that's how the megalithic, megalithic inch fits the megalithic yard. It's a digit to the megalithic yard being a step. And then all the old Greek values, yeah. if you see, you know, a finger or a digit is a megalithic inch, a hand length is a quarter of a megalithic yard. You find this quite often in megalithic circles. The pygon or rim in 20 digits is half a megalithic yard, and the step is a megalithic yard. Two steps, the megalithic fathom, two steps is a pace, and there you go. Ten hand lengths would be the megalithic rod. 
that the megalithic rod is not related to the megalithic yard as Tom, as Tom thought it was quite. Because if you've got a two and a half feet measurement, you can't have two and a half then. You're going to be at some three quarter thing, aren't you? you know, it won't be a, a whole measurement. It won't be a sensible measurement. Um, I'm going to run out of time here before we get up to the megaliths. Now, these are two values of the Belgic foot. They, they start at two different routes, so I don't want to compl complicate you with that. But these are all the possible values of the megalithic yard. Now, Tom stated there's, there's a probability amounting to a certainty that, that a single unit was, was used in, uh, in, in the setting up of these circles. And I propose to call this unit the megalithic yard. It's utter nonsense. It's utter nonsense. As we've seen from all, all the all the constructions of antiquity, no single measurement fits them all. Uh, if every single structure has more than one module in it in order to maintain integers. And you can see this from Tom's work on the megalithic circles. Here, 130 and a quarter, you know, and, and 43 and a third rods in, in the perimeter. No. The, the, the ancients always worked in integers, whole numbers, in both diameters and perimeters, and, and the maintenance of... of, of whole numbers on circular structures is maintained by the use of these fractions that separate them, 176, 175, 441, 440. But we don't have time to explore that either. But these are all the possible values in terms of the English foot of the megalithic yard. And you can see that Belgic and Sumerian feet. And the closest one that you often see to what Tom claimed is there, 2.7216. Now, this one also is written large in Stonehenge. Um, that's a step of, uh, of the Belgic foot. And you can find this value at there. It would be a standard geographic value in Stonehenge. It's quite plain. Here, yeah, I think Martin has been through this, so, so we'll skip this. Um, it pointed out how all the diameters point to other circles. Uh, just look back there a minute. Um, no, we won't. All of those are stone circle sites in Kalanesh. And all those lines are directed at you from the way the, the um, diameters are lined up. And, and this is how they all are. Now then, um, I've gone into this circle a little bit to, to explain about the measurements in them. Um, this guy uh, who did this, um, he just gives the values in megalithic yards. Tom often does this, which is a damn nuisance because you don't know which megalithic yard he's referring to. But if you take that as being the Spanish Vara, it has a very neat, it has a very neat um, solution. You know that can't be right because a megalithic yard is two and a half feet. You can't have seven and a half times two and a half feet. You'd end up with some ridiculously complex, irrational number. So th there is. Uh, more likely to be the case. I have to wind up. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've uh, barely started, really. But uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid that's all I've got time for. But um, it, it, it is a science. It is real. It was used in the ancient world, and fragments of it percolated down to the Greeks. And if the scientists want the, the to, to use the meter, let them have the bloody meter. Let, leave us our God-given measurements. Leave it to the people who believe in God because we're supposed to be in God's image and they all spring from the, spring from a human, from, for human convenience. So let the scientists get on with the meter. Give us our feet and inches back. This has been a Megalithomania audio production. For more information, visit megalithomania.co.uk.